back to Rue Career Radio, the podcast where we talk all things careers. My name is Allison Murdoch. And I'm Tess Serpranad. And we are your hosts for Rue Career Radio. In this month's episode, we are focusing on mentorship, the how, the what, and the why. We've invited our Block Career Center Manager of Professional Development, Ashley Nance, to discuss this topic with us. But before jumping in, Tess, can you review our usual housekeeping items? Sure. So career services will remain virtual for spring semester. I know we say that every time, but it's still true. For a list of all of our upcoming events hosted by our office and some of our really amazing employers, please check Handshake. There's some really good stuff in there from some really big name companies. Our spring career fairs will be virtual and conducted completely through Handshake. With our fairs being conducted virtually this spring semester, it is especially important that you prepare, prepare, prepare. A great way to do that is by attending one of our virtual career fair information sessions hosted by UMKC Career Services or the Block Career Center. Both offices will be reviewing everything you need to know and best practices for succeeding at the virtual career fair. And of course, UMKC alumni still have full access to all of our services. Please feel free to reach out via email anytime at careerservices.umkc.edu. If you have any questions or need any assistance, again, that email address is careerservices at umkc.edu. You know, I really love to joke that our students can access our services until the day they die. And honestly, it's actually completely true. Even after you graduate, you will always be able to come back and use our services when you need it. And so honestly, I mean, career services and UMKC students, name a better duo if you can. Allison, I couldn't agree more. I love working with alumni, so I really love it when our alumni come back and A, let us know what they're doing, but B, if they're trying to make a job change or a career change, come in and use our services. We're always happy to take a look at your resume, give you some tips on interviewing, regardless of where you're at in your career search. Okay, so Ashley, hello. What we know already and what the Block Career Center knew when they hired you is that you know a lot about mentorship. <laughs> Can you sum up your background and experience with mentorship, whether it's you know personal or whether it's in regards to previous programming that you've been a part of? Yeah, definitely. So I'll start with just the personal side. I was actually a first generation student and I was a student that came from military background, grew up kind of living everywhere in the United States and some abroad locations. And that taught me early on the power, I think, of just connecting with other people and introducing myself, making sure I was responsible kind of for my own success, I think. And that kind of took me all the way to college. I was an orientation leader that was really founded in connecting with other people and making sure that students felt like they had someone on campus to be mentored by. And when I got to graduate school and when I started thinking about doing more higher education and pursuing this work as a career, I was really interested in career services in particular and about how we help really students not just get connected to jobs, but how we help them develop that confidence to be able to talk about themselves and be able to really kind of put themselves out there professionally. And so much of that happens through mentoring, whether students think it's a formal thing or informal thing or not. But that brought me to my previous role at KU Business. So I worked with the Business Career Services office there, and I was solely responsible for managing our school of business like formal mentoring program. This was a program that was around actually before I started there, and I kind of just inherited it. And it was a program that was focused more on connecting current students with professionals in industry. And most of them were KU business alums. And I did that for six years. I loved the program. I was involved with bringing on new platforms and new software to better manage the program. I was involved with really helping to make this culture of mentoring at KU business, whether it was student to alum or peer to peer, 
I really tried to help bring that message, that broader message of, of mentoring to the campus and just showing how important it can be because it is really, really important. You never know who knows who. And I think mentoring can be really scary to a lot of students and that word mentoring can be really scary. It sounds so strict and formal and and just kind of out there. And so I, I really love talking to students about how it doesn't have to be scary, that putting themselves out there and helping to just make that first connection, whether it's put together by our office in Block or if it's put together by whatever, or if they just take the initiative and reach out to someone that it can really be a good connection for them. So I got my job at KU by mentoring actually, <laughs> because my former director was actually kind of a mentor in a role to me when I was a graduate assistant at another office at KU. So it, it's really amazing how much it can happen. And so that's kind of what brought me here to UMKC. Maggie and Tess heard about my work with mentoring, heard about my work with career services, and now I'm here and I'm happy to be here. I'm excited. We get to start mentoring initiatives here at UMKC too. I agree that I think that mentoring is really critical part of our students, but really any professional's professional development. And so we're really excited to to have you as part of the team. And like you're saying, so many students are a little bit intimidated by the idea of mentoring. And that's why I really like the idea that we as a school and as our two career center offices are putting together mentoring programs and platforms to make it easier for the students to get started and to really start building those relationships. And, and so I know you're going to share a little bit more about all of that. And, and we're excited to hear what you have to say. Yeah. So let's, we're going to just go rapid fire questions and you have no time to think, and you're just going to have to answer them as quickly as possible. Do it. So you touched on a little bit about this kind of in your intro, but I'm hoping that you can dig into this a bit more. So why is mentorship important and what does that even look like? Yeah. So in terms of like, I think career services and career development, and when we're talking about helping students navigate through the professional development process, I think mentorship can be really, really important for those early students, maybe first or second year students who are looking into career paths. Mentoring can be a way for them to connect with someone and bounce ideas off of them and learn and ask questions and kind of get into the mind of someone who has maybe been in their shoes. Juniors and seniors, of course, can do this as well, um, but those earlier students can really use mentoring as a way to connect to someone who has maybe been in the, their shoes and has had a chance to take some of the classes that they've had or dive into the major that they've had and be able to navigate some of those career questions that they might have earlier in their college process. But mentoring it can also be really important for upperclassmen as well, because it allows them to really be able to connect with someone about maybe the internship process or how to develop a resume for a particular application or an industry. They can also help navigate just questions regarding salary or questions regarding how to put themselves out there with a interviewer or a LinkedIn profile. So there's a lot of maybe even job specific um, or application specific things that juniors and seniors can learn from mentoring as well. Overall, mentoring is a fantastic way for students to really gain confidence in themselves and the, and the abilities and how they can navigate careers and how they can navigate the process. Because Life is not always linear. Careers are not always linear. And while you might think you have a plan A right now, it's good to also have a plan B and a plan C. And I think a mentor is really good to help bounce some of those the ideas off of and really help you get from that point A where you're, you are right now to that point B or C or D where you might want to end up. When it comes to mentoring, I think also students think that they need to have their entire life figured out in order to be of use to a mentor or use of use in a mentoring connection. That's absolutely not the case either. I think mentoring is really a good tool for helping you figure out those things and helping you kind of figure out what maybe is a good career path for you or a good path in general. In terms of what that mentoring looks like, it could be formal where it's facilitated through our career services office, where it's facilitated through school, where there is someone in place kind of picking and choosing who are going to be the student mentees and who are going to be the professional mentees. But it could also be really informal. There's so much mentoring that can happen between, let's say, a student and a faculty member or a student and another peer or a student and upperclassman peer, a student and a career advisor or a career coach. And so a lot of that informal mentoring can happen as well. And it doesn't even have to be something as explicit as, will you be my mentor or can I be your mentor? 
it can be something as as simple as just getting to know a person and asking them questions and being open minded to what feedback and advice that they might have. I know personally, I I never really thought about form mentoring as even someone who is a younger professional or approaching even maybe six to seven years in in my career. But I I've also had mentoring that's happened just organically, where I've just started to look up to this person and go to them for advice. And that's something that can certainly happen if you find yourself in a career or in a in a position where you've been there for a bit and maybe you're just not really sure what to ask. Look at those people that you go to for advice and questions and, and start to think of them as mentors as well. I know that before we were talking about some of the, the platforms and tools that can help. Can you talk about how a student can utilize our platform, which we're calling the Rue Mentor Network? And what are some of the features of this platform that, that can really help facilitate that mentoring relationship for students? Yeah, absolutely. So we do have the Room Mentor Network. It's powered by a software called Wiser. And on the Room Mentor Network, students and alums can get signed up and create a profile uh, that basically kind of lists the things that they're interested in learning more about and a little bit more about the professional background and experiences. But then on the platform, a student can choose to be matched up by our office in Block or in other career services areas and be matched up by an administrator, or they can actually just navigate the platform on their own and find folks that they might be interested in connecting with on their own. Students can also join communities. So there's different communities that are on there that are focused by interests. And uh, right now, I think we have a more general one called Ask Me Anything. And that's one that you can just join and ask the other mentors in the community anything uh, that might be on your mind in terms of professional development and progressing in your career. You know, one of the things that I love about the Room Mentor Network or any of these types of platforms is that all of the mentors, the only reason they're there is because they signed up to have those connections with students. So this is such a wonderful, low risk, low sort of way of of finding a mentor because everybody in this network wants to be a mentor to students, specifically at UMKC. Yeah, it's a pretty low risk way for students to really dive into expanding their professional network too. So something that you you mentioned, Tess, is that you love that these folks are here to mentor other students. Like that's what kind of what differentiates it from LinkedIn, right? And so LinkedIn is this one big community and And there's, of course, hundreds, thousands of UMKC alums on LinkedIn. And this is also a way that you can connect with those professionals, but know that they're there to help you as well. And it's not just a one-way street and you'll have some connections on the the Room Mentor Network and you'll get some responses back. So we know that some of our listeners are our vast listening audience, our alumni or professionals in the community, then how can they get involved? How How do they know that they're the right person to be a mentor? Yeah, so I'll, I'll start with the second part of that question, actually, the qualifications of sorts to be a mentor. We don't really have any qualifications besides an, a genuine interest in wanting to give back to UMKC students. I, of course, work with block students, so my focus area is going to be more business, but I have a counterpart who will work with centralized career services and, and more non-business students as well. And so really, we're looking for people who just want to give back and, and who feel like they have some really good advice to share with other UMKC students or with kind of their fellow UMKC community. To get involved, we actually do have a URL. So it is umkc.wiser.io slash login. And we will make sure that that is linked to our different pages as well. But if you are an outside or external to UMKC person, you can sign in with just an email and password. If you are a recent grad or a UMKC student, you can sign in with UMKC SSO. And if there are any alumni out there who are interested in this program or interested in giving back to our students, feel free to shoot me an email at amnance, N-A-N-C-E, at umkc.edu. I'm happy to answer questions about what the mentoring all entails. Of course, talking about time commitments and what we look for for a lot of mentors We do look into industry experiences and professional experiences as well, and in terms of helping to find you a good fit for a student. And so I would love to talk about that with anyone who's interested in the program. It doesn't have to be alumni. Yes. So whether it's with the Rue Mentor Network, or it's through another program, or it's just, you know, students trying to find this on their own, 
you know, how do students become a mentor to their peers or how do students find a mentor that's a peer mentor if they need one? You know, I think that that's a great question and there's several answers to that. Here at UMKC, we have a number of peer mentoring programs. We have the PALS program through University College, which is an organization that partners students up with other students and that have been signed up as peers, peer leaders, and those students can ask questions about how to be successful academically, sort of work their way through some of the bureaucracy of you know, navigating higher ed. But also seeking out a mentor at some student organizations, I think is a really great way to get started, to, to hear from students who maybe are a couple semesters further along than you about you know, how they chose a career, how they chose an interest area, how they chose a major, how they got involved. I think there are some, really some really wonderful ways to, to start the whole mentoring process with your peers. And even here in career services, in both offices, Block Career Center, as well as the Central Career Services Office, we have peer career advisors. And, and sometimes students just feel more comfortable starting that conversation with a student before, before they talk to one of our staff members. And so asking a student, you know, can you quick take a look at my resume? Am I right on the right track? Or how did you find an internship? These can be really great ways to start that mentoring conversation also. So whether it's a little bit more formal or a little bit more casual, there's plenty of ways for students to connect with other students right here on campus. I really have been telling students, you know, in a lot of different meetings that I have where they're just wondering, you know, how can I learn more about like different career paths, majors, things like that. And they're trying to figure it out. Student organizations are a fantastic resource to get those answers, talk to other students, and actually build your network at the same time. And these are people that are going to be like-minded, and there's going to be a lot of upper class students as well that can help you with that. So, you know, I tell students all the time, and, and mentoring and networking go hand in hand, but pay attention to the students that you're going to school with, because this is part of your network going forward. And I still keep in touch with people I went to college with, and, and consider them some of my, my greatest professional contacts. So it starts now. It's easy. And I love that test, too, because as I mentioned at the beginning, mentoring is not always formal, right? It's not always just what an outsider, external source picking you and picking someone else and saying, okay, let's be best friends now. That's not always how it has to go. It can start with just an informal conversation or you introducing yourself at the end of the Zoom call next time you're on a meeting with someone. Or next time you have class, like it can be as simple as that for sure. One of my most trusted mentors is a woman that I used to work with, and she just has a great perspective and and she's very level headed and and she gives great tips and advice and super informal how it all got started. But now anytime I have a career issue, I bring her up and it's like, so what do you think? And, and she's just been a really wonderful resource. So it, again, it does not have to be a formal in a mentorship program. It's, you can find your mentors anywhere. I feel like Daniel's probably my mentor at this point. And Daniel's I'm, my mentor also. Okay. So. <laughs> Daniel's everybody's mentor. For the listeners, we've had Daniel on this podcast twice, three times. I don't know. I just keep bringing him back because he's just has so much knowledge in his, in his head. So we're always like, talk about this, talk about that. Okay, so moving on, <laughs> jokes aside, this one's for you, Ashley. How can professionals find a mentor if they don't have these more formal programs that students have? Yeah, absolutely. So I think it can be as easy as finding someone through LinkedIn or finding someone in your workplace that you admire or maybe someone that you are interested in their work and reaching out to them. I'll, I'll come in with a joke too. People love talking about themselves <laughs> and people love talking about themselves with people that are interested in their work. And so if there's someone out there that really interests you, that um, you admire, that you're thinking, wow, they do such cool stuff, reach out to them and uh, you never know what can happen. Even if it turns out that it's not necessarily a mentoring type of engagement, you still put yourself out there and you still worked to make that connection. And honestly, that's a pretty brave step. And, and that's, a, that's a step that a lot of people are not always comfortable doing. And so I, I would say first do that and uh, think about the people in your network or maybe even a little outside your network who are, who are doing cool things that you admire. 
But I would also encourage that if you are at a company right now or a corporation, look into maybe what your HR offers. There are a lot of companies and corporations at different sizes, small, medium, and large, that offer their own type of employee communities or even mentor programs. Sometimes these are based on affinity groups. Other times they're based on interests. Um, Sometimes they are company-wide where a beginner employee is matched with someone that has been there a few years, for example. And it's not always new hires. It can definitely be anyone who wants to participate in that program. But if you're not sure if your company offers that or if that's something that you even know about, I would touch base with your HR person first and uh, see what they can provide. Um, Sometimes companies even have training and development professionals who can point you in the right direction. And most often it is their entire job to do training and development, including mentoring programs for employees at your company. If you work at a smaller organization, I don't think it has to be anything too formal. As I mentioned, I think it could be as simple as just reaching out to someone who you work with and having a conversation to get to know them a little bit more. I don't think it has to be something that you say, hey, can you be my mentor or will you be my mentor? I think it's something (laughs) that can just happen organically. But if you want to say, will you be my mentor? Go for it. But I think it can be something as simple as you just getting to know each other and going, going to that person for advice if they have the time. And to add to that as well, as you were talking about, you know, going to your HR and seeing what programs they have, professional affiliations as well, professional organizations uh, may also have that. I know NACE, which is the National Association for Colleges and Employers, I believe. (laughs) I think that's the the full one. I always mess it up a little bit. But they have affinity groups and they have different groups that you can network with. But also those are good opportunities to possibly find mentors. Well, and also put it out there that many of those organizations have student meetings. So I know, of course, this question Mm. started with alumni, but if students are interested in getting involved at the professional level, whether it's for mentoring or if you're just interested in meeting other industry-minded folks, that could be a really great pathway for professional development. Well, and as a professional, even joining a professional association that is associated with your chosen profession, there's the American Marketing Association, Mm -hmm. there's the social media marketers of Kansas City. You know, there's a really great supply chain organization here in town. So most of these organizations, I mean, they're here to serve as networking and mentorship organizations for for that professional community. And so see if there's an organization related to your own profession. And they almost always have student options also. So Ashley, you've worked a lot with alumni, with students, with mentors. What makes a good mentor? What makes a good mentor is someone who is ready to listen and not make it about them, which sounds kind of harsh, but it it is really about someone who is willing to listen to the other person's concerns and kind of their hopes and dreams and things that they need questions on and be ready to answer in a way that does not include a lot of biases or include a lot of opinions from their own experiences. Found that when I work with students, when I work with alums, the the folks that have had the best type of connections are the ones that were able to really separate out feelings that they might have about a particular organization or feelings that they might have about a particular pathway or experience and be able to really reflect on whether or not this experience or this piece of advice would be the best fit for that particular mentee or best path for the person that they were talking to. I also find that the best mentors are the ones that are really empathetic and and thoughtful and can care and are kind and really care about providing that support. Of course, a lot of other things fall into that are things like time commitments and on whether or not they're able to dedicate the, the time to that. But I will also say that a lot of mentors who don't have a lot of time make good mentors. And so it's just about kind of quality rather than quantity of what time that they can commit to to the person they're talking to. But really, mentoring is a two-way street. It's not just the mentee getting knowledge. It's not just the mentor giving knowledge. It can very much be both parties learning from one another. So as long as there's that willingness to learn, that willingness to be open-minded to feedback and not completely closed off to what that person is telling you, that's what I think really makes a good mentoring experience and makes a good mentor a good mentor. Yeah, the learning on both sides I really like. Because you don't think about it that way very often, but it's definitely so true. 
And I think it's very much the case, especially if you have a student who's maybe new to the mentoring scene or new to networking or new to professional development, they might be intimidated by this process. And and there might be a power dynamic there where they're thinking, I'm just going to defer to this mentor who has been in the scene a little bit longer than I am. But it's not always the case. There's actually a lot, really a lot of guidance and knowledge that you can pass along to your mentor as a student, really, or as a younger person in the industry. So really, it's a it's a two way street where both parties can be learning. Yeah, sometimes my brain lives in marketing communications, part of its career coach, part of its marketing communications for this office. But immediately what I think about is just like, it's ever changing, right? There's new technologies, there's new strategies, techniques to doing these things. And if you have a mentor that's not maybe as familiar with some of the new um, ways to go about marketing communications or the new technology that's out there, that's definitely something they can absolutely learn from their student who is taking classes and getting that knowledge. They shouldn't be surprised if their mentor asks them a lot of questions about themselves as well or about what their career paths are or what, what they're learning in the classroom, what projects they're working on, because so many times a, a mentor in industry would want to learn from you and see what you're learning. They're getting a top-notch education at UMKC, right? And so they want to, they want to reach out to those people and, and, and learn more about what you're learning in the classroom. Well, and along those same lines, you know, every generation has a shift in sort of their cultural perspective and how they want to approach their career and, and communication and all of that. And that can be really valuable to a manager at an organization who probably is you know, managing a team that is more the age of the mentee. And so it's great for them to get that insight and understand, you know, how do you think, how do you, how do you approach this sort of problem? Or how do you want to be communicated with? Because that's something that they can bring back to their own team and be more successful as a manager. Love it. Always, always have to be willing to learn. That's it. Thank you again for joining us, Ashley, and congratulations on your new role. We are so excited to have you here with us. I'm always down to talk about mentoring. It's a passion of mine for sure, not only personally, but professionally. So I'm really excited about making connections and about helping students make those connections. Happy to be down on on the podcast whenever you need me. I can say this won't be your last podcast appearance. (laughs) Be prepared. Well, and this wraps it up for our episode. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and of course, our YouTube channel, UMKC Career Channel. We also encourage you to join our LinkedIn group created for UMKC students, alumni, and employers to connect, post positions, to get updated on career prep info, tips, tricks, all of that stuff. And I can say we have a lot of episodes and new series planned this year for Rue Career Radio. This 2021, actually the full year of 2021, we're totally going to ramp things up. It's going to get crazy. So stay tuned. You've been listening to Rue Career Radio brought to you by UMKC Career Services and the Block Career Center. We'll talk next time.